after testing this, riding this, test riding the DJI, complaining about the new Specialized to Specialized after riding it, visiting Asco, and now reading the news from Marley, I had to make another video about DJI and how they made their motor. So I'm going to simplify as much as possible to get through all of this. I really wanted to try and understand how DJI made their motor and what all the fuss is about. So firstly their choice of gears. They chose to use a planetary gearbox, which depending on who you talk to has pros and cons. The main one being more complicated to assemble compared to cascade gears which are in most other motors. These planetary gears give a massive step up and as DJI quote it's a 1 to 40 so one turn gives a 40 turn or you can amplify in one hit where the other gearboxes use a train of gears to get to the same multiplication. So I asked DJI how's the system working, what's going on and is there anything more complicated going on in the system? And this is what they told me. We use the NW double planetary transmission mechanism in the gear set to achieve a large speed ratio of nearly 40, which has a smaller volume and lighter weight. Providing stronger torque output performance, the motor uses block cores to simplify the winding process. So block cores are basically square cores inside the coil. Improving the slot fill rate and combining high performance magnetic materials to increase the motor output power at the same volume. The magnets they're using are super strong, the coils are wound tight, pretty much like many of the other motor companies. Some probably use slight variations, but very similar. Obviously, this is standard motor design. Other companies also use the strongest magnets, well-designed coils, etc. And now, it looks like Marl has done the same thing. You can't quite see inside the pictures there of their inner gearbox working. It looks like to follow a similar design. Right, next, the battery. DJI have the same access to cell tech that everyone else has. So they built a battery much in the same way as everybody else. You align the cells, you stack them in groups of parallel and then you add them together in serial so you add 10 stacks together 3.6 volts to get a 36 volt battery so there's nothing new there compared to other battery makers now i do have a battery production video coming up soon so remember there's limited space inside a battery so you cannot make them extra lightweight. Something like 85% of the weight of a battery is the cells themselves. So the only way to save weight would be in the casing and the PCB of the battery. These batteries are 800 watts. The rating of the battery is the same as another 800 watt hour battery and they can only put out the same amount of power output. And power is voltage times current. If you have 36 volts and you have the possibility to put out 23 amps or 25 amps or something like that, you can put out 800 watts for an hour or you could put out a higher rating of current maybe and peak at say 1,300 watts, 1,400 watts, but more than that, you're gonna struggle. So for example, Ascol peaks their battery at 1,300 watts. I've seen this when riding, but that's at the battery. It can also be massively reduced by all the inefficiencies in the systems. And the average is 30 to 40% across all the systems of inefficiency or efficiency losses. So now we've got Marley on the market and they've upped their voltage to 48 volts. There are a few other companies that use 48 volts, but basically they've chosen 48 volts, which means you need less current. And, but the power output is the same because remember power equals voltage times current. So you have less current, higher voltage. What are the advantages? Well, it does allow charging a little bit quicker, maybe. Uh, it uses obviously the same, you can maybe change the cell stack formula to stack the cells differently. But at the end of the day, power is voltage times current. That's always true. So no matter what happens within the battery system, it's going to have a similar output. It just might change the efficiency. It depends on how the inverter board works. So what's the takeaway? Well, from all of this tech, looking at how DJI did theirs, looking at how Mario do theirs, looking inside how Askel do theirs, looking inside how Bosch do theirs. Basically, what we've got is they're all using and they all have available the same technology. There is no magic bullet. There's always just marginal differences to the core technology and what they're able to pull out of it. Okay, with all that in mind, then we have uh, 
One last point, software. Now this is where I'm gonna jump onto the GoBow uh, as a comparison to DJI. So GoBow have told me very clearly that you can install a Shimano-centered software, a Bosch-centered software, or any type of software feel that you like, but it's all about software design. Now, why do I mention GoBow? Well, GoBow make controllers, which you can find on the brand new Mercedes bike. If you look closely on the pictures, you see that's a GoBow controller. And so their expertise in software electronics and all of that is massive. And it's kind of interesting that they have only now decided to move into the mountain bike or the bicycle electrical motor world. So this brings me to why this bike here is so important. And this is an ENG WE bike. These are like the cheap bikes, electric bikes. They got big batteries, got a 600, 700 watt hour battery, a thousand watt motor. And this thing has about 55, 60 newton meters of torque with that motor. So not a huge amount of torque, but a lot of power. And the point is about this system is because of the sensors it uses. This only has a cadence sensor installed on. That means I can turn the pedals and this bike power system will fire up to full power if I've set it to full power mode with just the movement of the pedals. It takes one turn and the bike is already pushing at maximum power. And this power is then exclusively controlled by the software in the controller because there is no torque sensor. So if I unlock this, I can go to 45 kilometers an hour with no fuss at all, just by turning the pedals with only a few watts of input power from my legs. So knowing this, and after speaking to many motor engineers and what DJI have done, that they've given them the user the ability to spin the pedals with no torque pressure on there, just cadence as the main bias measurement, and it means that the motor will output maximum power very quickly and very easily. Whereas a system like uh, Bosch probably uses more torque sensoring in certain places. I can feel that Yamaha uses more cadence sensoring. So the multiplication factor can partly be based on the gearbox. So in their case, a one to 40, but also it can be based upon the, magne the amplification factor of the rider input. So if you're putting in hundred watts and you're getting out 600 or a thousand out, that means there is a very very large multiplication factor taking place. And that is one of the things that the new proposals are talking to limit a little bit. So up to 15 kilometers an hour, it can go to six. And then after that, it can go to four. You can balance the torque readings. You can balance the uh, cadence readings. The answer for giving that power output is much more simple than what the marketing would suggest. There's no magic taking place. It's literally a balance of cadence versus torque. Because theoretically, you could turn that motor up to three kilowatts and it will as long as you only hold it there for say 20 seconds and the heat doesn't go too high, you know, you can then turn it back to 250 and you meet the regulations. So based on my knowledge, certainly hitting battery cells harder for current will weaken them over time. So what you've got going on, if you discharge the system in one ride, you can fast charge it quicker, fair enough. Compared to a normal battery system where I'm discharging it maybe in two rides, I'm therefore gonna be charging my battery more frequently, or it's more likely that that's gonna be happening. You're gonna to have to manage your battery life. Okay, so I've put this battery on fast charge. This is the charger, it's quite big. It's almost as big as the battery. There's also a fan on it, so obviously it gets hot. That means it's gonna be charging now at 12 amps, because this is kind of flat and I need to get it up quick, so yeah. The last point is why haven't they done this planetary step up gear system from the other motor companies? Why have they stuck on the cascade? Maybe it's just production costs. Maybe it's there's other trade-offs we're unaware of. These trade-offs will come out over time as these motors finish in the consumer's hands and finish in the consumer market for a longer period of time. DJI have beaten Mullet to market two motors now, which are very similar on paper, but obviously DJI have got more money invested into the marketing. So they've spent a lot of money on a lot of uh, YouTubers and various magazines trying to keep their, their motor in the press all the time. So obviously that creates hype. Miley, I don't think are gonna be out doing that. They don't have the same government company backed funding as DJI. The other thing you've got to really have that's gotta be really important is an excellent technical service support network for your system. So Shimano failed a little bit in that. DJI yet to be seen. I know they're building their, 
uh, their dealer base up and obviously they're very active in de dealing with problems and I expect that to continue. So they will grow and they will be a strong force. Most important thing you can remember is eventually all mechanical things break and we need that support there for the end consumer for a long life cycle. So it's really important to be able to repair these systems. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.